welcome you watching the property show with me Vasudha Sharma if you're looking to buy a home in any of India's top metros tier to cities and new emerging destinations then this is the space to keenly watch every day of the week at this time on NDTV profit in the studio I'm joined by my expert co-host Samir Jasuja to evaluate all the questions related to buying real estate that you have been sending us let's begin with a look at what's lined up on the show today best residential options under 90 lakhs on the Noida Expressway We'll also evaluate Ghaziabad's emerging real estate corridor, the NH24 bypass and its hottest properties. Which hotspot on the Gurgaon NHA should you invest in for healthy returns? And in the south, best projects within 50 lakhs in Chennai. Hyderabad's top locations and properties for homes in a budget of 50 lakhs. And a report on how the Aadhaar card is helping the Delhi Development Authority to provide housing to the poor. Let's begin the show with a look at the top news stories that impact your moves in the property markets. The Supreme Court today has ordered status quo on an Allahabad High Court order to demolish Supertex 2 under construction towers in Noida. A bench headed by the newly appointed Chief Justice of India has issued notices to the builder, Noida Authority and buyers preventing immediate demolition and entering into third-party transactions for these flats. The two 40-storey towers in Emerald Court project have 857 apartments in total, of which about 600 flats have already been sold. The developer in its petition has claimed that two towers were being constructed as per approved building plans and that there was no violation. The Embassy Group and its joint venture partner, private equity firm Blackstone, have acquired a 60% stake in a business path for 1,200 crores. Vrindavan Tech Village, now renamed Embassy Tech Village, is spread over 106 acres on the outer ring road in Bangalore with commercial, retail and residential spaces. After this acquisition, Embassy office parks would have over 20 million square feet of commercial real estate space. According to Chairman and MD, Jitu Virwani, Embassy Group has now over 1,50,000 park users across four business parks with tenant relationships with over 100 companies. Realty firm Purabankara Projects has sold a 50% stake in its upcoming project at Kochi to Shobha developers for 326 crores. Both Bangalore-based companies will jointly develop a housing project on this nearly 17-acre land near Marine Drive in Kochi. Puravankara has entered into a co-owner agreement with the Shoba developers to develop this project. As co-owners, both firms will execute the project, with each being entitled to equal rights. Sales bookings of Goldrage properties rose by 77% to over 1,000 crores in the fourth quarter of the last fiscal, despite the market slowdown. The realty firm's booking stood at 601 crores in the January-March quarter of 2012-13. According to the company, its sales bookings more than doubled in volume terms to over 13 lakh square feet during the January-March quarter of last fiscal as against just over 6 lakh square feet in the same period of 2012-13. The Kerala government is planning to introduce a slew of measures to streamline the real estate sector in the state. The steps include setting up a real estate authority, an online registration facility for developers and amendments to the Coastal Regulation Zone Act. According to the State Minister for Urban Affairs, the government is giving final touches to the Real Estate Authority Bill and a draft of the proposed bill will be available in the public domain within a month. To preserve and maintain the rich heritage of the walled city area in Jaipur, the State Town Planning Department has proposed the government restrict the permissible height of buildings up to G plus 2 on either side of main roads. The amendment is proposed as the town planners are apprehensive that the mushrooming commercial establishments might erode the heritage value of historical monuments in the area. As per the original heritage plan, G plus 2 was the only permissible height for a building in the walled city area. However, amendments were made in the building bylaws and permissible height of the building was made up to G plus 3. Okay, first up, let's talk about Noida, Ghaziabad and Gurgaon. And our first caller on the line is Pavan Srivastava. Hi Pavan, what's your question for us? Hi Vasudha, I want to buy a 3 BHK in Noida in sector 137-142 within 80 to 90 lakhs for end use. Please suggest good option, price and future potential of this area. Also, should I buy property in resale or through builder because there is a lot of difference in price? 
Okay, two sectors that Pavan has in mind. 137, it's going to be connected by the metro, the Greater Noida Noida link. Uh, 142 is going to be connected by the former FNG corridor, which is now called the Noida Ghazabad Link Road. Uh, Samir, he also wants to know resale or develop a property. Right. So, to answer the first question, which is uh, uh, 137, 142, these are good sectors. Uh, the sectors that we've also shortlisted are slightly different but close by. Sector 107, 37 and 93B are some sectors that we would like to recommend to you. Uh, on resale versus developer, uh, if you get a better price in the resale market, uh, the developer has to uh, do the transfer in his own office and he's a part of the agreement. So I think it's pretty safe as well. So wherever you get a better price, that's what you should be looking at. Uh, coming to the recommendations and the key data points, uh, if you were to look at uh, Noida, we've got Expressway 1, uh, Stretch 1 and Expressway Stretch 2 for you. Uh, inventory overhang for Expressway Stretch 2 is about 24 months. Expressway 1, uh, Stretch 1 is slightly better, it's uh, only 15 odd months. Uh, if you were to look at the weighted average prices, uh, 5750 rupees a square foot for Stretch 1 and stretch 2 is 5000 rupees a square foot price appreciation trends 46% or 18% on an analyzed basis for stretch 1 and 49% for stretch 2 because the base is a little lower or 20% the projects that you can consider are banalika by sunworld infrastructure this is sector 107 this is excellent connectivity to the noida expressway and dadri road uh, project is on main internal road and project possession is within 6 months the second one is Lotus Boulevard 1 by the 3C company. This is uh, got ready in 2012, available from the resale market. This was PE funded by Redford Capital as well. Uh, possession of phase 2 is starting in a few months time. You can afford to buy a 2BHK plus study in this project. Uh, lastly, we have OMAX Grant by OMAX Limited Sector 93B. This is available in the resale market as well. It's bang on the Noida Expressway, ready to move in towers, possession handed over in 2012. Okay, so Pavan, uh, three projects that we are recommending on the Noida Expressway for you. Vanalika by Sunworld Infrastructure, Lotus Boulevard 1 by the 3C Company and Omax Grand by Omax Limited. Next, we have an email by Vikrant Chavla. Vikrant writes, I'm thinking of investing in a new project starting at NH24 by Wave City. Can I get some information about it? Specifically, one of their projects, Opulence Woods. My purpose is investment with a budget of 25 lakhs. How much appreciation can I expect from this? So NH24 bypass largely an affordable housing um, region. Right. So appreciation could be um, significant given a low base. Yeah, it, it could be there, but uh, also, also the question is that there has been a huge amount of oversupply in that area as well. So the appreciation because of the low base can be good, but because of the oversupply can be muted, uh, can be muted because of that. So it will be on an average basis. Opulence Woods is a recently launched project by GIPL Group. Uh, price uh, for the project is between 2250 and 2450 rupees a square feet under many schemes. It's a G plus 24 structure. Construction for the project is yet to start. Also, project is still awaiting approvals for com from competent authorities. Builder is also quite new and doesn't have any delivery track record. So you could look at some other options as well. Uh, we have, first let's just come to the key data points of these areas. Uh, there is 18 odd months of inventory overhang. So that seems safe for the NH24 bypass. The affordable to mid segments bearded average price is 2750 rupees a square foot. 31% has been the price appreciation over the last two and a half years or 12% on an analyzed basis. The other two projects that you can consider are Gulmohar Vatika by SVP Group. Uh, this project is available with the developer right now. It's a new launch project within Wave City. Uh, construction of the project is yet to start, uh, approved by almost all the banks. Then we have Aditya City Apartments. Uh, this is 2017 completion available with a developer. It's a part of a 185 acre integrated township called Aditya World City. Uh, plots, independent floors, villas are already launched within this township. Uh, it's a recent launch and project construction is already underway. There is uh, no third project that is available with us that is appropriate in your budget. Uh, Samir, what about the other markets in Ghazibad? The Rajnagar extension, is that also suffering from oversupply concerns? Yeah, Rajnagar uh, extension has got a significant amount of oversupply. Uh, so, I think whether you go for Rajnagar or uh, NH24 bypass, but NH24 bypass is still contained in terms of inventory overhang. Okay. 
but uh, when it comes to because these are both of these are affordable markets so when it comes to end users oversupply shouldn't be much of a concern maybe for the yeah investors. i don't think it's for end users that much of a concern they just need to look at the right project because they're not looking at an early exit mm -hmm. so they are pretty safe that way okay so Vikram, we advise that you uh, look at other projects on the NH24, Opulence Woods by GIPL Group that you have in mind. Uh, this project in Wave City is still in the process of getting approvals. Uh, you can check out our recommendations, there's Gulmohar Vatika by SVP Group and Aditya City Apartments by Agarwal Associates. Uh, now we have Amit Kumar on the line with us. Hi Amit, how can we help you? I'm looking to buy a two or three bedroom flat in Gorgaon with a total outflow of around 80 lakhs. That is inclusive all taxes etc. for investment purpose, rental income as of now. I do not mind waiting one to two years more, but not three plus years. Uh, then promise deliver dates uh, since I understand a huge pro project cannot always be delivered in three to four years. Uh, please help me shortlisting a few projects among New Gurgaon, Sona Road, Golf Force Extension, Dwarka Expressway that I can afford. As of now, I have looked at a few projects in New Gurgaon in sector 75, 77 in fact, among Winter Hills and MR Farm Hills and sector 81, uh, Vatika Flows, Max, uh, Maps, uh, Mapsco, Casa Bella. Please let me know if they are worthy. Uh, I am getting a deal in resale on among, among Winter Hills and so would also like to seek your advice on it. The deal is for a park and sector road facing 3 BHK, 1515 square feet, corner flat at the rate 4,400 per square feet. Okay, so Amit has a budget of 80 lakhs. Uh, he's confused between New Gurgaon, Sona Road, Golf Course Extension, Dwarka Expressway. His primarily, a primary aim is rental income. You know, that's a little bit of a challenge because uh, rentals are really down in Gurgaon as, mm. as of right now and uh, tenants are hard to come by. Within this given budget, you'll have to look at New Gurgaon and look at it as an investment destination because rentals will not be good over there as well. Okay. The project selected by you, Winter Hills, uh, is currently trading between 4,300 and 4,500 rupees a square foot. Construction is in advanced stages, uh, will be delivered by 2015. Uh, it's a JV between Opal Housing and Indus Capital Partners, uh, so it's pretty safe. Uh, instead of this project, uh, this project is also constructed by Aluwalia Contracts which is a publicly listed firm and is a very good contracting firm. As such, uh, we've got three more recommendations for you that you should look at in the new Gurgaon sectors but we'll first look at some data points. Uh, we have uh, sectors between Sona Road and NHA, 30 projects and new Gurgaon region 70 projects. 15 uh, months is the inventory overhang for sectors between Sona Road and NHO 8 and new Gurgaon region is 24 months so just on the danger zone. 6,000 rupees a square foot is the weighted average price for uh, sectors between Suna Road and NHA 8 and New Gurgaon region is 4,700 rupees a square foot. Price appreciation trends 46% and 48% respectively for sectors between Suna Road and NHO 8 which is 18% and New Gurgaon sectors is 19%. The three recommendations from our side are Tulip White by Tulip Infrastructure. This project is recently completed, possession is in process at present. A uh, project with decent connectivity and bank finance is also available. Uh, this is Tulip's third completed project in this region over the past one re year, but rental returns will be a challenge. Burgaon 21 Vatika Limited, this is also available from the resale market, it's getting ready next year. It's a 21 acre project within Vatika India Next, uh, excellent location near NHO2. Carnation Residency by Oris Infrastructure, this is 2014 completion year, available from the resale market. The project is bang on the new sector road and the developer has sizable land back in New Gurgaon region. Uh, Sameer, what about Golf Course Extension Road given all the... 80 lakhs, commercial? he won't be able to get anything that is reasonable. Okay. okay. Uh, also, uh, uh, in your data points, you mentioned that uh, the New Gurgaon region compared to the sectors 70 to 80, uh, New Gurgaon is faring much better. Is this primarily because of the infrastructure development led by the major yes, developers? Yes, absolutely right. Absolutely but right. given the fact that the Northern Peripheral Road, the Dwarka Expressway is still not in place, it's clearly the big brands which are leading the development. We also have DLF on the other side of the NH8, the SPR region. How come this difference in the market? Well, if you look at uh, the Dwarka Expressway region, livability has just not happened yet. There is just no social infrastructure whatsoever. But if you were to look at the new Gurgaon sectors, because it's also very near Manesar as such, and there is livability over there, so there is some amount of social infrastructure that will be there. And DLF is making a big efforts over there to ensure that livability happens as soon as possible. But right the opposite, the sectors. NHA, the southern peripheral road area, that's still stuck in litigation. Yeah, there are, there are challenges there even now. Okay. 
So Amit, we are recommending projects on Sona Road and the new Gurgaon region for you. There's Tulip White by Tulip Infrastructure, Gurgaon 21 by Vatika and Carnation Residency by Oris Infrastructure. Alright, uh, Slum Free India has been one of the key goals of the government and for which various housing schemes have been launched over time. But improper documentation has meant that housing for the poor never reaches the beneficiary. The DD is now looking at using the Aadhaar number to address these issues and make sure that the flats go to the targeted beneficiaries. Unitam Ojha reports. Anju and her family have been living in this slum not very far from the heart of Delhi in Punjabi Bagh for the past 32 years. With hardly any space to accommodate a family of eight, Anju applied several times for a DDA EWS flat. But every time she applied, it was either the slumlord or some middleman who ended up owning the flat that should have actually gone to her as these middlemen would either fake or forge the required documents. <laughs> और बाकी जैसे जिनके बच्चे बड़े हो रहे हैं फैमिलीयां हैं वो अपने वैसे ही गुजारा कर रहे हैं राशन कार्ड है उनके पर वैसे ही गुजार कर रहे हैं वो लेकिन वो उसमें गिनती में लिस्ट में ले ही नहीं रहे 10 झुग्गी हमारी यहां से अभी तो, तोड़ी गई हैं उनको भी अभी नहीं बस आया है वो डेमोलिशन स्लिप मिला डीडीए के तरफ नहीं हमें कुछ स्लिप नहीं मिला अभी डीडीए इश्यूज डेमोलिशन स्लिप्स एवरी टाइम अ स्लम इज डेमोलिश्ड एंड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दीस स्लिप्स एंड फोटोकॉपीज ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंट्स लाइक राशन कार्ड एंड वोटर आईडी कार्ड Flats are allotted to slum dwellers. But top DDA officials admit that these documents are forged or duplicated, and this is one prime reason why the genuine beneficiaries get left out. DDA officials say that the pricing of the 250 to 300 square feet flats is another trigger for frauds in the DDA housing schemes. There are a lot of names in the voter list. Anybody can get a fake Russian card made or pick up a Russian card which has got similar names and then try to come and claim. We are giving a flat which is almost 40 to 50 lakh rupees. We are giving it for a pittance, almost 4 or 5 lakh rupees only. So that benefit should go to the genuine people. DDA is now knocking the doors of UIDAI to help the authority plug loopholes in the identification and allocation process in its housing schemes. DDA is now in talks with UIDAI for the use of Aadhaar numbers for proper identification of the beneficiaries. DDA is now in the process of setting up an Aadhaar facilitation centre within the DDA premises. There are some people who own the Juggies, others rent it out. So that is the usually that is the kind of model. So there are a lot of vested interests who get involved, who then try to collect these slips from these people pay them off a small amount and then come and claim those flats or plots from us. So we are interested that the actual beneficiaries should be identified first at a national level. I think Aadhaar is, is a very safe way of establishing the identity of the person. Delhi slum population is estimated at about 18 lakhs, concentrating in areas like Sangam Vihar, Kusumpur Pahari, Pahargunj, Simapuri and Kathputli colony which is being relocated. DDA has so far allotted 4 lakh flats for slum rehabilitation. Another 2,400 one-bedroom flats are ready for allocation in Dwarka and the authority is all set to construct about 30,000 flats in the LIG EWS category. In view of the Supreme Court ruling that Aadhaar numbers cannot be made mandatory for social welfare schemes, DDA is planning to restrict the use of the number only to identify the beneficiaries. In New Delhi, Oenita Moja, NDTV. We'll take a small break right now, but you stay tuned because on the other side, we'll explore Chennai and Hyderabad for apartments in a budget of 50 lakhs. And our legal expert of the week will be in the studio to advise on your property-related legal matters. 